Welcome everyone. So uh, and welcome to the to the conference to EuroPython. Um, so my name is Leandro, and I, I'm a software engineer at ARM uh, in the UK. Uh, and I'm here to present you this talk about uh, with an introduction uh, about Apache, Apache TVM. And the idea uh, is for me to uh, show you why uh, it exists as a project, which gap it tries to bridge, and uh, then I will show you uh, some of the main features we have and a couple of uh, demos. So to start, uh, we'll see an overview about how to uh, install, um, then a list of uh, features and, and main functionalities you can access when using TVM, uh, a couple of demos with a command line and our Python API, uh, and then some uh, final remarks. Uh, also would like uh, to mention that uh, my involvement with the project, so I've been working uh, with this project for about uh, two years and a half, uh, and I, uh, I'm a committer for TVM and one of the maintainers of the uh, TVMC command line. Um, so to start, uh, I would like to explain uh, what Apache TVM is as a project and what is the gap that uh, it fills. As uh, some of you might be aware, uh, the ecosystem for neural networks and the ecosystem for uh, deep learning is quite complex. Uh, and I think this picture summarizes it uh, very well. So from the top side, you can see that lots of groups are uh, concerned with implementing input frameworks, operators, so that you can create your own neural network models. So you see over there TensorFlow, Keras, MXNet, PyTorch. So these uh, projects are concerned with uh, creating uh, those operators so that uh, people can create their models uh, to accomplish something, be that uh, image recognition, uh, speech recognition, text-to-speech, this, all, all these sort of uh, cool things we see with deep learning uh, every day. On the bottom side, you can see that uh, other groups and, and companies and um, lots of people are creating hardware to accelerate uh, deep learning models because uh, these uh, mo models are, uh, some of them are quite big and we want them to run uh, with good performance. So we try to squeeze every kind of uh, little gain in performance uh, in many ways uh, as possible. So be that with hardware, be that with uh, compilation, be that with uh, specialized libraries that uh, know how to run these internal operators very well. Uh, but then there is this. So there are, if you are implementing a, or creating a new hardware to accelerate deep learning, you want to be supported by as many input frameworks as possible. And uh, on the other side, if you are working on an input framework, uh, such as TensorFlow or PyTorch and this sort of thing, you are interested to be supported by, I mean, as much hardware as possible and have access to those libraries that can give you gains uh, in performance. So TVM uh, is, as a project, it exists to bridge that gap from many input frameworks uh, supported to uh, the ability to uh, support your hardware and support your uh, functionalities that will make your models to perform well. So uh, in that context, so uh, Apache TVM is an open source project and uh, it defines itself as an end-to-end -end machine learning compiler framework for CPUs, GPUs, and accelerators. So, Translating that into some more kind of a concrete pieces. So imagine you have a model in one of those uh, formats in there, such as TensorFlow, PyTorch, TF Lite, and this sort of thing. You will use TVM to target those models to be run on your CPUs, GPUs, accelerators, and uh, libraries as well. So you will get a mix of uh, which parts of your model are more suitable to run on 
each of those uh, target um, uh, hardware and or uh, libraries. Um, so Apache TVM is implemented uh, in C++ and Python, but it presents itself as a Python first uh, framework, which means that every major feature is uh, supported in Python and it has an API to be accessed in Python. As a community, we have been working uh, together for uh, well, some time to get our uh, project exposed to developers and, and Python developers, uh, especially such, such as yourselves. Uh, and we have been working on uh, providing a Python package on PyPI. So uh, it's currently, uh, literally, uh, in the last weeks, we've been releasing uh, TVM 0.9. And um, it should have a pre-release package available uh, from, from this morning. I checked. And uh, you can uh, install using uh, this command. So there, there might be a couple things in there, which is that the dash dash pre is to allow uh, non-release uh, versions of the package. And there is also the square brackets part, uh, TVMC, which is to set and install a set of dependencies that are not installed by default when you install the package. So it's, um, it is uh, this way uh, because there are uh, multiple audiences, so you can use TVM as, uh, as an API to integrate it with your project, uh, but also we want to have, it, to have this version with kind of all batteries included so that uh, we have uh, everything you need to run TVM as an API or as a command line tool. Um, there, is, there are other options. So the build is uh, highly customizable. You can uh, include and remove uh, optional parts as you wish. Uh, it's very well documented, the, the build process. You can check on that URL. Um, as we have lots of dependencies because we support lots of things, that's kind of a, one of the uh, main features of the project is that support is very wide in the in the deep learning ecosystem. Uh, we have and we make available some Docker images with uh, all the dependencies that you need to to have a standard build. So you can you can check that on the Docker repository as well. Um, now, uh, some. Uh, coverage on how to use uh, Apache TVM. So there are two uh, main ways, as I mentioned, uh, there, there is an API that you can access to do that, those transformations on your models targeting to a specific hardware. Uh, so APIs, there are two APIs who uh, allow you to access most and uh, well, all the features, which are the Python API and the C++ API. So here we are talking uh, more about Python API there is some documentation you can check uh, about how to use TVM with, with its uh, C++ API. And there is also a more uh, user-friendly, so if you are used with uh, compilation tools, which in practice is uh, what TVM is. So if you are used to compilation tools such as Clang, GCC, and, and all uh, the compiler ecosystem, we provide this command line interface, which we call TVMC, as part of the project so that you don't need to go there and get to know all the internal parts in order to make a standard workflow to run. So this is, uh, we'll cover the command line interface today as well as uh, one of the Python APIs uh, that you can use to access TVM. So the highest level API uh, that you can use to access TVM's uh, main features. Um, yeah, so as I said, uh, TVMC, it exposes uh, some features of uh, Apache TVM to end users. So that is a user who wants to uh, build TVM or have TVM installed on their, on their machines and want to accomplish a task using TVM as a piece. So uh, you will fit that piece on your workflow and you, you have kind of limited expectations on how much you need to understand how that works internally, right? So you should be able to just use TVM as a tool on your toolbox. That's, that's the, the idea. 
Um, so it comes in two flavors. One is the command line tool that we will see, uh, just, uh, just to give you an idea. So that's kind of uh, just um, kind of a small tool that uh, you can use to access features. Uh, and also, we make it available as a high-level Python API so that you can accomplish most of the things that you can do with the command line uh, via Python scripts. Um, TVMC is part of TVM, so there is no need to install two things. You install, you install TVM as a Python package, you have access to TVMC. And the main advantage is that uh, when we upstream and we made a TVMC available, um, there was this thing that every time you wanted to use TVM, you would need to create this boilerplate. And this would uh, break if the API changes. And also, you would need to repeat that uh, for as many models as you have or projects and, and this sort of thing. So there's a way to reduce this uh, boilerplate uh, code required and also to uh, follow what is the best practice, for example, to compile a model, what's the best practice to tune a model and make that very specific and with good performance or trying to improve performance for your target hardware. We made that official as part of the command line tool so that uh, you always have access to, across time, what is the best way to accomplish that uh, high level task. Um, so the command line tool, I'll go uh, briefly on, on how it is organized. So you, you will see that uh, as, which is kind of the fashion these days, you have a tool and then you have uh, subcommands to expose features. So uh, you see TVMC and then a subcommand with the specific options for that. Um, there are uh, four subcommands these days. So we have TVMC compile, which we use to translate a given uh, input model. So get a, a, an Onyx model, for example, from the Onyx uh, deep learning framework. And you will build a compiled version of that model. And uh, so if you understand a little bit about the compiler's ecosystem, it will, well, it can use and we will use by default LLVM to generate native code. So you will be running native, natively on your own machine. Uh, that model tra translated from the uh, high-level framework. There is also a TVMC Tune, that's a green box. Uh, TVMC Tune uh, allows you to try many, version, many versions of the model uh, with com different compiler optimizations to see which one gets performance improvements on your machine. And then it gives you uh, a report of how I mean, what it, fa it found which runs best on, on this uh, specific target that you asked. Um, then the TVMC run, the orange box, so that uh, allows you to uh, execute a specific model. So you compile the model, you generate uh, a package with that model, and then you can run that, which is the final goal, to generate predictions for, from a specific model. So if your model is for image recognition, so you do TVMC run, you will be able to collect some of the outputs from that particular model. Uh, finally, the uh, gray box, that's a TVMC micro. So um, many of these models, they can fit into microcontrollers. So very small boards like uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Pico, the, the last one, and uh, many other boards from, from different vendors. So you can uh, generate those, uh, generate code for a particular model that uh, can fit into uh, those uh, small microcontroller boards. And this is a set of um, features that allow you to uh, automate that process. So there are some features in TVM that allow you to just translate your model from the input framework to C and then uh, we use that to integrate that model with an embedded project, and then you can run that on, on a small board. So um, going a little uh, deeper into TVMC compile. So there are a lot of uh, input frameworks that uh, we support. 
So if you have a Keras model, Onyx, uh, Paddle, Paddle, PyTorch, and uh, TensorFlow, uh, you can use a TMC compiled transparently just to get that model and generate code for that model. So you can have um, a, a compiled version of that model. So the uh, wording I'm using to uh, say that output is a compiled module because that is something you can integrate with your projects uh, in many ways. So uh, if you know a little bit about uh, compilation and, and output formats for compilation, so one of the outputs of uh, this TVMC compile can be a shared library, so a .so file on Linux, for example, that uh, you can use to uh, have access to your model functionalities via C++, uh, but we also offer facilities to load that uh, using Python and then using the TVM runtime to execute that model locally on your machine. So it's, uh, it's native code running on your processor. There are not uh, so many layers uh, like using an in, uh, interpreted uh, runtime, for example. Uh, yeah, so you can, uh, the last bulletin there is uh, cross compilation. So you can cross compile, uh, again, taking advantage of uh, code, gen, uh, code gens like uh, LLVM. Uh, and um, in that way, you can generate uh, a compiled version of that model for a, for a machine which is not the same uh, that you have running. Now, TVMC run. So the way TVMC run works is it gets a compiled module from the output from the previous command, plus some input tensors. So how do you want to, which input do you want to pass to that model? And then it will generate predictions. So it will uh, give you the output of that, that the model would give you when you run it. So you have access to those tensors, you have access to those arrays, and then, uh, you can uh, interpret that as, as the output of your model. It also supports some cool features like uh, profiling. You can see if you are somebody who is working on the side of creating neural network models, you can see what is the cost in time of running each layer of your model. So you, it can generate uh, quite uh, detailed uh, prediction out, uh, uh, profiling output. And also it has uh, something which is very interesting. You can, um, using other uh, TVM features such as remote execution, you can execute your model uh, remotely on, on a different machine. You just need to have the TVM runtime on the remote machine running and there are facilities and everything uh, within TVM to run um, via an RPC tracker. So you can have a pool of machines that are ready to execute your model. You have your uh, TVMC command line and you just kind of will dispatch jobs on those remote machines to run your model and accomplish your task. So if you have, if you are integrating with some hardware which is not the same hardware that you are using to develop, uh, this is uh, very handy because then it gives you that uh, uh, integrated mechanism to run that using all uh, TVM, parts of the TVM uh, project. Then uh, TVMC Tune, uh, I guess just uh, going one step back. So the tuning process is something that is particular to, to TVM, is one of, of uh, its uh, main uh, differentiators, so to speak. And it aims to find configurations in the model uh, or activate and deactivate uh, compilation optimizations to make to, or to try getting uh, better configurations for your model. So it will run and it takes some time to find those uh, configurations as in uh, intermediate shape sizes and this sort of thing uh, in order to get your model to run faster on a given machine. So if you're running your model on a, on a GPU, for example, it might benefit from having uh, data in particular shapes to take advantage of uh, your GPU architecture. And the output of this um, are tuning logs. So tuning logs, they will list very in a very detailed way for each operator on your model, 
using this configuration, this is the performance uh, the process achieved. And it will try to iterate that over time and improve um, the, the configuration so that uh, if it finds a way that it uh, run faster, then uh, it will try to evolve that um, and then over time giving you or trying to give you performance gains. Uh, yeah, so the other thing, just coming back to this, is that uh, so the, these results, then uh, once you run a session of tuning, these results you can run to do further tuning and get and try to find even better, even better configurations, or you can use this as an input for compilation. So if you remember two steps before, you can, uh, on TVMC compile, you can provide tuning and then it says, yes, by the way, I know that uh, these shapes in these layers and everything uh, will run faster on this machine. So generate me a model which takes that into consideration. Then finally, uh, TVMC Micro. This uh, was implemented uh, in the end of last year. And the idea is to provide some uh, facilities to um, simplify the workflow of starting from a given model, make that model to run on an uh, embedded uh, operating system such as Zephyr, for example, if you are familiar with uh, embedded operating systems. It can also generate uh, Arduino style projects and it will, from behind the scenes, what this does, it will put the right sources in the right places and it will code gen the model in the right way so that you can uh, transparently just uh, make that project to comply with the model and make that model to run on an uh, embedded device. And by embedded device, uh, I mean more um, microcontroller in microcontroller space. So you will start with a compiled module uh, plus a templated project. So, so this template project knows where the sources need to be correctly. So when you generate your model as a C source file, uh, then it uses that template project that it knows where to put them so that it generates a valid project. Uh, then it uh, generates that uh, embedded project and uh, you can put them in your target hardware. So if you look for Zephyr, so Zephyr is a, is a very uh, big uh, embedded project, uh, embedded operating system, and uh, you can uh, transparently use in these tools to generate that. Uh, now, a little bit of um, a comment about uh, inputs and outputs. So when you are implementing a tool which aims to be generic, such as TVMC and TVM, uh, you need to provide a generic way so that people can input uh, data on your models and read the output. So every model or every class of models seem, uh, tends to have a particular way that you want to format your inputs so that the model accepts it. For example, uh, if you have a image uh, recognition model, it will expect that the input is not just an image or a random image. It will expect the image to be on a particular size and the colors on that image should not be kind of any colors or in any color space. So it expects the, for the, the input format to be quite strict. And if you don't do that, you won't get the full benefits of the model you are using. So because of that, um, which is particular to every model. Uh, when implementing this tool, we decided to go with a very simple input format, which is serialized NumPy arrays. So you can, the format is very documented and is very simple to generate models and to, uh, to export and import from, those, from, the, from that format. And the idea is that if you are integrating this tool with your model and you know, obviously, you will need to have access to that information, uh, then you will work with inputs and outputs using that uh, NPZ uh, uh, format. I will, I will show uh, an example on how to do that. 
Yeah, so it's, uh, it can be integrated very simply. So usually in these projects, you already have NumPy as a dependency, so you already have it uh, in there. And the, the idea is that just before uh, giving the inputs to your model, you need to convert them to NPZ. And once you get the outputs, you need to parse the outputs as an NPZ uh, uh, array. Um, yeah, okay. So I will show uh, how that is done and uh, uh, kind of a full workflow with that when I do the first demo, which, which is uh, soon. So then um, when we were implementing TVMC as a command line tool for TVM, uh, then people noticed that uh, the API we were creating to generate the command lines, it was a very good abstraction level to have access to TVM features. Then uh, some work was done in order to make those um, APIs to be officially provided by the project so that uh, you can use a set of APIs which is stable to do a common workflow such as compile, tune models, run models, this sort of common task in a way that uh, it will be more stable than the underlying APIs that are used by these commands. So if you follow uh, using the APIs on this module, uh, then you are less uh, impacted by internal API changes, so you can keep uh, taking advantage of uh, TVM features and um, not uh, have kind of uh, breakages and everything uh, all the time. Now, um, so this will be our uh, second uh, demo for today. And I think uh, now I'm gonna start. So on the first one, as I said, uh, the idea is to do a full workflow with uh, the command line. And I'm gonna show uh, this today, but this is also available uh, as a tutorial in TVM which was, uh, so I was initially involved uh, in the writing of the first version and then it was improved uh, by, the, by the community. And the idea is that uh, it has a, a detailed uh, explanation of every step we are doing. You can reproduce this on your own machine and uh, you will hopefully achieve the same results that we will achieve uh, in here. So to start, Going back to my uh, terminal. And the, the idea is that uh, on the first step, we will download a model. So this model is a uh, ResNet uh, 50. So it's an image recognition model. So which means that uh, you provide an image to it and it will say what is the most relevant feature in this image. So what is the main, characters of, main character of this image? and with uh, which uh, certainty, so to speak. Um, the, so, yeah. so the first step is to obtain the model. As I was uh, planning, and uh, as I am planning to do this live, I already downloaded the model. So the model is uh, this file here. It's an Onyx model. So it uses the Onyx format uh, to, implement the model. There are other uh, input formats that implement the same model, so for, for you to have an idea. Uh, but for this demo, we are using uh, this one. And then the first step is basically to compile the module and uh, generate some code out of it. So the idea is that uh, we will run TVMC uh, compile. We need to provide some uh, target. So I will use LLVM. So LLVM will be used to uh, generate uh, machine code uh, for this uh, specific model. Uh, and it also, uh, just to show you, that's, that's, not, uh, kind of, that's not a mandatory argument or anything. Uh, I'll just show you some of the internal layers that uh, TVM uses to, in order to uh, code gen this model. So I will, uh, first, just remove this so that it keeps the same. 
I will show you the LLVM code it generates, and I will also show you something which is uh, internal to TVM and is specific to TVM, which is called the Relay IR. So uh, just to understand a little bit of uh, how the process works internally to TVM, you get this model, which is in your chosen uh, input format. TVM will convert it to Relay IR, which is particular to TVM, and then from Relay IR, it will go to the backend. So it will go to the layers closer to the hardware. So it will code gen or it will integrate with any libraries that you uh, want to have it integrated with. And um, yeah, but all starts from converting a model from a particular format into Relay IR. Now, um, I'll just set the output name so that I will call it um, mod module dot tar. So we just, uh, we just tar the files so that we don't generate kind of a scattered set of files and uh, uh, just, yeah, just as a tarball. And then uh, the model. So this takes uh, about a minute in order to convert uh, this model, so we can just uh, wait it in there. And uh, I guess while this uh, is running, I can give you a comment about uh, what are the next uh, steps in the process. So we will use this compiled module uh, to generate some predictions, and then we will read those predictions and interpret them. So as I mentioned before, so every model will, will generate an arrays, basically, some sets of uh, numbers. And those numbers, we need to interpret them as kind of uh, users in order to generate something that is that we can interpret. So if generates, this model will generate kind of uh, on a thousand different classes. So which ones, uh, what is the probability of that being of, uh, of that image to belong to that particular class. And but that image as itself, it reading that and, and interpreting that is, is quite hard. So we can uh, just write a small script that will open that and we will generate some information that we can read uh, in a simpler way. Now, okay, so that's done. As you can see, there is that message, one or more operators have not been tuned. Please tune your model for better performance. And uh, this is basically uh, saying that I didn't provide any tuning, uh, tuning uh, inputs for this model. Um, yeah, but we will do that later. Now, what I get as an output is this uh, module.tar. And the idea uh, that I will show you now is um, my pre-processing script. So in order to input something in this model, I need to do some uh, handling of these uh, files and, and things. So what this is doing uh, is downloading an image from, from the internet. So that's uh, that uh, little cut. Uh, it will do some um, normalization of the image, which is required by the model. This is not, this is not required by, by TVMC. Anywhere that you would use that network, you would need to do that uh, handling of the input. So it will normalize according to, to some uh, factors that is required. And then in the very end, what I'm doing is just uh, saving that model as an NPZ uh, array. So it's serializing the NumPy arrays to a file. And that file I'm just calling ImageNet cut dot npz that uh, numpy does that for us so if i just call that uh, i can i can call this reprocess.py and uh, it does that and it will get that uh, image net cut dot npz file in there and the so the idea is that we will be able to uh, tvmc run then send that uh, input. Uh, we'll say that the, is the image net cut. The output, oh, sorry, dash, dash, output. Uh, I'll just call this output one dot npz. So that's the output of the first step of the demo. And um, 
Yeah, so then there is the module dot tar. Ah, uh, yeah. So just add a small flag here, which is print time. And then it will, so compiling, if you remember, it took about a minute. Uh, running, it's very quick because it just invokes the runtime, loads that uh, shared library, and then runs it, providing our input. Our input didn't need anything special from the runtime because we provided it already, uh, uh, everything was in the right format with right names and everything. So we can see it run, I mean, at the order of uh, 51 uh, milliseconds. It's all the same because I run it only once. We can basically just, if we want to benchmark or something, we can just say repeat uh, and then we say a thousand times or something to avoid the CPU noise or GPU noise or, and, and this sort of thing. So yeah, so this uh, run uh, quite quick because it's just invoking the runtime. Now, the next step would be uh, running TVMC tune. Uh, and then we would just say target equals LLVM uh, and then our model. And this would start a tuning process. So that tuning process, I've run it just to make sure that it was quite fresh. I run this uh, with TVM sources from last night. And uh, just so that we don't wait 12 minutes in here, I run this before, uh, about an hour ago to generate uh, a tuned, uh, tuned logs uh, from that. So these tuning logs are here. And if we have a look on them, I mean, don't, uh, don't get uh, scared by this, but uh, the idea is that these are uh, outputs from the tuning process. It's a, sort of a messy JSON file, but it's useful for the compilation process. A few things to identify here. So this is a uh, neural network operator and uh, some data types, some uh, shapes of the tensors, formattings of the uh, input, and then some uh, performance results. So that, uh, I guess the, the main mental model here is that uh, it correlates some performance outputs to configurations on a particular neural network operator. That, that's what it does. And it does this a lot of times. So then that's the, that's the idea. Then it, uh, when using it, basically the first thing you do is to fish out the best results and then see where they fit on your model and then you, it applies it in there. That's, that's kind of the main idea. But how do you use those? So you do TVMC compile. Uh, you say dash dash uh, tuning records, that's the official name. You just say tuning logs, dash dash target as well. Uh, what else? So this and then dash dash output. I'll just call that, uh, yeah, so it, it's already there. Let's say tuned module uh, two dot tar and then our uh, ResNet model. Oh. Tuning records. Okay. Um. Model dot. Uh. Hmm. Okay, just a sec. That's the beauty of live demos, right? Um, tuning logs. Oh, yeah, it's the bow one. Sorry. It's a little spelling error. Yeah. Okay, so now it is it's doing the compilation um, of that same model, and but instead of just doing it uh, out of nowhere, it's basically providing some tuning records to try guiding the compilation process for us. And the, the idea is that when it finishes, it will use at least uh, tested versions of the operators that uh, gave some performance improvement. The longer you leave it, the bigger are the chances you will get some uh, improvements. 
Now, if we just run that same model I again, so it's the uh, print time, and then I'll say tuned module two, and then I'll just call that uh, output two. So if we compare this with the previous run, so there was a gain uh, in performance, and just by the fact that we left it uh, tuning for a while. And the, the idea uh, is that uh, if you have a particular hardware or if you have a configuration with GPU and everything, uh, the idea is that you can make that model to, well, at least give it the opportunity to try to get uh, some performance improvements on that uh, particular hardware. Now, um, okay, but then uh, there is this thing. So we run this uh, quite a few times, but we didn't check the outputs. So if we give uh, the model uh, this input, so, and that's the input we are using, and that's the input if you reproduce this tutorial, you will use. Um, if we basically, so we are getting as an output of the TVMC run command, you will get some vectors in there. And um, what I have is a post-process script, script that will uh, basically download some labels from that model, which correlates which class of the model. So if this class is very high in, in terms of the prediction, this image shows a bicycle, or this, if, if this class, different class, it will be a guitar or something. So the idea is that it will correlate and print us the five most relevant uh, classes for the predictions generated by that model. And the idea uh, is that uh, if we just do Python post process and we say output uh, one, which is the output from the first step we run, uh, it will show that uh, it is a, a tabby cat with 62% uh, uh, of uh, probability. And the idea, so if we run that, uh, all that tuning thing, we generate some uh, outputs, we don't want to degrade the model quality. And the idea is that uh, it will run, and with the, with the output of the tuned model, it generates uh, the model, the outputs uh, with the same uh, probability levels. So that's kind of a, an accurate uh, tuning process that, that we run. Um, okay, just a final thing. I wanted to, sh to just uh, give you a hint of um, um, the, how to accomplish a similar thing using the Python API. So that kind of uh, codifies everything that we run on our practice. So the, uh, it loads the cat.npz, loads the model, runs the compilation process, and then runs this on CPU, and then generates the output. So uh, if we run this, we will have the output number three, uh, and then it will generate with the uh, correct outputs. I'm getting out of time, and I just wanted to uh, finish uh, with uh, this, with some final remarks. So this was a high-level introduction to TVM, as in why it exists, what are the main features, and how to access them as a Python programmer or as, a, or as an end user. Uh, I recommend if you are interested in TVM, uh, you can read about uh, remote execution and read more about uh, how to run TVM on microcontrollers. And uh, finally, just wanted to say that, uh, so TVM is a very uh, active community, it's a very friendly community. So if you are interested in this area of deep learning compilers and the intersection of all these different layers in the deep learning ecosystem, uh, I recommend you to, to reach out. Uh, there are lots of opportunities uh, in the project for uh, Python programmers and uh, Python uh, development and everything. I'll be around in the conference for, well, until uh, Friday. And uh, yeah, just uh, reach out if you want to chat. Thank you very much.